a message to all Jehovah's Witnesses. To say the Bible is corrupted, is to say that man, is equal, with God. Jehovah's Witnesses wrote their own book, to replace the Holy Bible. As if they got authority from God, when God states in Revelation 22, 18 and 19, that if you did this, you will be cursed, and not allowed into heaven. Revelation 22, 18 and 19 contains a warning to anyone who tampers with the biblical text. These are Jesus' words, and he warns against distorting them in any way, whether through additions, subtractions, falsifications, alterations, or intentional misinterpretations. The warning is explicit and dire. The plagues of revelation will be visited upon anyone guilty of tampering in any way with the revelations in the book, and those who dare to do so, will have no part in eternal life, in heaven. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. According to the Watchtower, if you study the Bible by itself, you will come to believe these things, Trinity, Hell, and Jesus is God. All Jehovah Witnesses trust their eternal soul to the teachings of several men headquartered in Brooklyn, New York, who claim to be the directors of God's organization on earth. The truth is, eternity is a long time, to be wrong. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jehovah created Jesus as an angel. They teach Jesus is Michael the Archangel. But what do the scriptures say? John 1 verse 3. All things came into existence through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. If all things came into existence through Jesus, he could not have been created because he is included in the all things. If Jesus is in the made category, he had to make himself, if you don't exist, you can't bring yourself into being. Everything in the made category, was all made by Jesus, therefore, it is impossible for Jesus to be in the made category. Christ was not made, he was always eternal with the Father. That is what it means, to be God. Jesus' substitutionary atonement was accepted for one reason, God accepts only his own righteousness. The righteousness of a man or an angel, is insufficient to hold up to the holy and perfect standard of God's righteous law. Jesus was the only suitable sacrifice because he was the righteousness of God. And as God's law required shed blood, Jesus stuck on flesh, so that he might be a ransom for all who believe in his name. God's perfect Son fulfilled God's perfect requirement of God's perfect law. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. If Jehovah is the Alpha and Omega, then the first and the last must refer to Jehovah, so the witness claim. But when did Jehovah become dead? The only first and last who died and lived again, is Jesus. Jehovah's witness know nothing of the indwelling of God, which empowers one to do good works. They do not realize that we do not work to be saved, but do good works, because we are saved, and love for what God has done for us, motivates us. You, are the target. After your death, your soul will live on for eternity. In heaven or in hell. Peace-loving people, have been brainwashed, and turned into soldiers, not for a country, but, for a belief. This one is named Melissa Gordon. Here's Melissa, with little Emily, ready for combat. Melissa's military headquarters is located in Brooklyn, New York where they program families for world conquest. This is the ammunition facility. The most powerful weapon in the arsenal, is the Watchtower magazine. 
Melissa is taught to love it, defend it, and trust it more than the Bible. She has gone through intensive training five nights a week for years, making her combat ready to battle for your soul. What do you see across the street, Bonnie? Jehovah's Witnesses. I don't want you to open the door, Frank. I didn't run when I was in military combat, and I won't run now. Hello, I'm Melissa, and this is my daughter, Emily. Nice to meet you and Emily. I've got questions I'd like to ask you. Did you bring your literature with you? Oh, yes. Let's go sit under the tree, and my wife Bonnie will bring us some lemonade. Thank you, sir. Now, Melissa, I do understand you think Bonnie and I are pagans, and you want to save us from annihilation at the Battle of Armageddon. With all my heart. Good, so tell me. Which one of these can I trust to protect my soul from destruction? If I'm a soldier, and I can choose from two weapons, I want the one that will save my life, and those around me. Which one will you choose, Melissa? I trust Jehovah's Watchtower. It gives me new light. Does it claim to be inspired, by God, like my Bible? No. Awake, Magazine. March 22, 1993. Page 4. Admitted. The brothers preparing these publications are not infallible. Their writings are not inspired as are those of Paul, and the other Bible writers. So, you will trust your eternal destiny, to a magazine that admits, it is not inspired, instead of God's holy scriptures? The Bible says, the holy scriptures, are able to make thee wise, unto salvation. A crack appears, in Melissa's armor. There is a precious person inside that armor, that Jesus died for. Is she worth helping? Absolutely. The watchtower completely controls her life. What can crack her armor off? This is the Achilles heel. When faith in the watchtower is shattered, everything comes apart. Then what must take its place? Melissa, is this the way the watchtower says that Jesus died? Yes, on a torture stake. Where did Pilate place the sign over Jesus? Over his hands. Please read Matthew 27, 37. It says, and set up over his head, his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. If the sign was over his head, where were Jesus' hands? Not over his head. Another crack appears. One more question. How many nails are in Jesus' hands? One. Could you read what Thomas said, in John 20, 25 to me? Okay, but I'm using my Bible this time. Unless I see in his hands, the print of the nails, and stick my finger into the print of the nails. So, is it one nail or more, Melissa? It's more than one. Then the watchtower is wrong. Jesus didn't die on a stake. If the watchtower couldn't get that right, how can you trust it, to lead you to eternal life? We can trust the scriptures. May I read to you from my Bible, what it says about Jesus? Yes. What's wrong, Kitty? What if the scriptures proved, that Jehovah and Jesus were one and the same? That's impossible. But, but what if what it's true? Jehovah spoke through the prophet, Isaiah. I am God, and there is none else. So only Jehovah is God, right? Absolutely. Then Jehovah says, I have sworn by myself, that unto me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. So every knee will bow, to only one being. Who is that? Why, Jehovah, of course. Now look at Philippians 2. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. If we only bow to God alone, then Jesus must be Jehovah. Both are the same God. We must only pray to Jehovah, right? But when Stephan was being stoned to death in Acts 7, he saw Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Which did he pray to? Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. At death, our spirit returns to God. Jesus received his prayer and his spirit, because Jesus is God. Melissa, after Jesus died and rose again, 
he appeared to doubting Thomas, and Thomas called him, My Lord, and my God. If Jesus is not God, that's blasphemy. But Jesus accepted his worship, because Jesus is God. Isaiah the prophet spoke these words of Jehovah. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. The apostle Peter testified of Jesus, to the high priest. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven, given among men, whereby we must be saved. Melissa, Jesus, is Jehovah. Melissa, Matthew 1 fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah 7, 14. Mary, a virgin, bore a child. That child, Jesus, was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus lived a perfect life. People tried to find fault in him, because he did things God was supposed to do. Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Why doth this man speak blasphemies, who can forgive sins, but God only? Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? For a good work, we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Evil men beat Jesus, then killed him the Roman way, by crucifixion. Note, two nails. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But, three days later, Jesus raised his own body from the grave, just as he promised. Only God could raise his own body. Melissa's armor is shattered. Melissa, I care about you and your daughter. Please take this Bible and check everything for yourself. May God lead you into all truth. Thank you. Bye, Kitty. Jesus, I know you are Jehovah God. I believe you died for me. Please forgive me and come into my heart. And he did. Melissa is saved. Jesus said, him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Dear reader, the inspired scriptures state that Jesus Christ, who died for your sins, is Jehovah God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In Romans 3.23 the Bible says, For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. And there is none righteous, no, not one, in Romans 3.10. So the first thing that we establish is that the world is condemned under sin by the law. The law is a revealer of sin. It's our schoolmaster to teach us what sin is. It's the knowledge of sin. And so we have all broken God's holy law. And because of that, because we are sinners before a holy God, Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So the wages are what we earn in this life by our dead works, through our sin. It's what we, it's what we earn for sinning. And because of that, there's a penalty for our sins, which Revelation 21.8 is an example of that. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idol idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, we haven't, many of us, I think nobody on this panel has committed murder. You know, we haven't maybe been sorcerers for, you know, the vast majority of people that you meet. We haven't done everything on this list, but all of us have at least told a single lie. And so we have all transgressed God's law. And so that's the bad news of the gospel. And the good news is that God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5.8. We have the most famous Bible verse of all, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, there are two key doctrines there. We have the doctrine of grace through faith alone and that whosoever believeth in him. There's also a choice to be made there. Uh, you need to choose to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And the other part of that is that we receive everlasting life, which by very definition means that it is 
eternal. It is forever. It never ends. And so the doctrine of once saved, always saved is inherent within the gospel of John 3.16, the most f famous Bible verse of all time. And so what does this mean? What do we have to do to receive this great news, this great salvation that comes to us from above? Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4 encapsulates this. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we have the death the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ right there for us. God himself became man. He was incarnate. He became flesh. He was the only begotten through the person of Jesus Christ, the second person of the divine and holy trinity. And so God became man, and he took our sins upon himself, went on to the cross, and died. Death could not hold him down. But Romans 10, 9 through 13 says how we can be saved. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart, that's the key, believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So the key there is that faith begins in the heart. And when we have faith in the heart, we make profession with the mouth. It's the result of believing the gospel. And so once we do that, we are saved. It simply says to believe. You know, somebody asked, somebody asked the apostles in Acts 16, 30 through 31, he said, and sirs, what must I do to be saved? Somebody asked that question directly. And they said, they didn't say to turn from your sins. They didn't say to go clean up your life. What did they say? They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And so Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 is the go-to verse that I use to prove that salvation is not of your own works. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works less any man should boast so if salvation is a free gift if it is the gift of god that implies that you cannot earn it you cannot work for it you cannot maintain it it is absolutely 100 percent free and the bible says direct directly that it is not of works so the gospel is free it's grace through faith alone and that leads us to everlasting life which says in john 5 24 Jesus said, verily, verily, these are the words of Jesus Christ himself, verily, verily, which means truly, truly, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Notice that's in the present tense. We have everlasting life at the moment of professing Christ from the heart and believing on the everlasting gospel of grace. It's grace. It's not works. It's everlasting. It cannot end. You cannot lose it. You cannot work for it. You cannot maintain it. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Add or remove anything from it, and it becomes another gospel.